learning outcomes after studying this module you will be able to know about fiber and its nature about the forensic importance of fiber and lastly about the examination of fiber evidence now let us start with the introduction the smallest unit of a textile material which has a length many times greater than its diameter is called as fiber fibers can be of natural or man made that is synthetic natural fibers can be of two types animal or the plant fibers a fiber is spun with other fibers to form a yarn which can then be woven into a fabric the transfer of fiber and the significance of fiber associations is affected by the length and the type of fiber used the type of fabric construction and the type of spinning method employed these aspects are very important when there is a possibility of transfer of fiber between the victim and that of the suspect now about the nature of the fiber the fibers are varied in nature so under this we will first study about the natural fibers these fibers originate either from a plant or an animal source plant fibers the fibers obtained from various plants and vegetable sources are called as plant fibers the main constituent of vegetable fibers are cellulose the commonest and important plant fiber in india are cotton flax hemp jute and coir but there are other fibers obtained from other plants also though they have no commercial status the latter can also occur sometimes in crimes formerly plant fibers dominate the cloth the clothes upholstery industry also synthetic fibers are taking over the trade increasingly now next comes the animal fibers the fibers obtained from animals are called as animal fibers these fibers are naturally made from the fibrin protein the frequently utilized animal fibers in india are wool mohair cashmere angora feathers down feathers for pillows quilts etc camel goat and other animal hairs have also been utilized natural silk is another variety the three common varieties are the cultivated silk tussar and cultivated and analyzed silk the animal furs are also used as a dress material their hairs are the animal fibers then comes the man made fibers these fibers are not derived from plants or animals and are made using various chemical treatments and that's why they are called as man made fibers and the man made fibers we have the regenerated or the derived fibers it is a machine made fiber obtained by the regenerated cellulose from cotton wool and other suitable plant materials the structure and the properties of the cellulose fibers are modified in the regenerated fibers so they are also known as the modified fibers rayon are the modified cellulose fibers important varieties of uh, rayon are acetates viscose cupra ammonium they are extensively utilized in the textile industry they are also man made fibers but their base is natural fiber mostly cotton or wool plastic coated material fibers or the natural fibers like plastic coated coir is also used in mattresses and sofas the paper is manufactured from wood rags or grasses disintegrated paper provides fiber evidence the paper fibers are sometimes strengthened with plants plastic or metal fibers they are also used in some industries naturally occurring proteins have also been used to produce the modified fibers for example casein fiber is obtained when alkaline solution of certain protein is extruded 
through acidic solution. Next comes the artificial or the synthetic fibers. Most of the fibers presently manufactured are produced solely from the synthetic chemicals and are therefore classified as the synthetic fibers. These fibers dominate the scene and it is doing so increasingly. The number of different synthetic fibers is already a legend and the number is increasing with vehemence of the passage of time. There are about 25 varieties. The main types are the acrylics, polyamides, polyesters, polyvinyl, fluorocarbons, teflon, olefins, etc. Some other synthetic fibers are chlorofibers, the fluorocarbons and the polyurethane elastomers. Next are the mineral fibers. Asbestos and glass fibers are the most important mineral fibers. They are extensively utilized. Then comes the metal fibers. These fibers are extensively used in textile industry and for some other purposes in India also. Gold, silver, brass, aluminium fibers are common. Increasing use is being made of metal coated plastic fibers and plastic coated metallic fibers. They and their fragments will be encountered more frequently in the coming times. Next comes the mixed fibers. Most of the clothing fibers today have more than one color or even different shades of colors and are also more than one type of fiber is used in that particular fabric or clothing. Hence to identify the same it is essential to identify the mixture of different colors and fibers. Next we will study about the forensic importance of the fibers. Fibers are termed under micro tracers. Micro tracers as evidence have great importance and are mainly employed for the following reasons. Micro tracers are almost always exchanged in accordance with the principle of exchange that is principle of Lucard's mutual exchange. Hence they are present in all crimes. They often remain unnoticed and hence undistributed, unmutilated or undestroyed and thus can provide useful evidence. In fact, the culprit is often unaware of their existence, location and their value. He therefore does not take into account the usual precautions to prevent their occurrence or deposition. The main fault of the judicial proof had been, is and perhaps will be for some more time the oral evidence of the eyewitnesses. They are not the only becoming rare but also highly undependable and unreliable. Quite a few of them jump the fence for cash or kind or for fear of retaliation by the accused. Micro trace evidence like other evidences can help determine the corpus delicti. Micro traces permit identification of the culprit, the victim and of the various materials involved in the crime. The root of the hair after comparison of its DNA profile with that of the suspect can establish the identity of the culprit. Micro traces can link or delink a suspect with the crime. Once a bite mark on the breast of the sex victim identified by the culprit can also be done. It provides leads. Micro traces fixes the identity of the scene. They help in construction of occurrence, the sequence of various events and that of the modus operandi. Transfer and cross transfer of the fibers frequently take place among all the persons, places and paraphernalia which are involved in the criminal cases through wearing apparel, carpets, upholstery, bedding, textile mills, draperies, furries, etc. Fibers surround us all around. So much so that it is difficult to imagine a person who would transfer or not transfer or pick up fibers even in his day-to-day -day functioning. This transference and cross-transference also has taken place in the criminal situations. The fibrous evidence therefore should be available most of the time in most of the crime situations on most of the persons and materials involved. Mutual exchange once established clinches the case against the accused as it provides the necessary corroboration 
especially in cases of offenses against the person so as to maintain the evidence of the victim and the eyewitnesses fibers are valuable evidence because of large variety and frequent exchange it has been used to calculate that if six different common fibers that is different in color sizes material treatment to the extent of use have been exchanged they provide the linkage the probability of reoccurrence of such an exchange as a conservative estimate is 1 in 64 into 10 to the power 6 a similar exchange of the eight fibers reduces the probability of reoccurrence to 1 in 256 into 10 to the power 8 if the fibers are of rare types they provide a still higher linking probability fibrous evidence is often inconspicuous it remains unnoticed the culprit therefore does not destroy it for the same reason the evidence also remains unhampered but all the fibrous evidences does not remain attached to the substrata in fact most of the fibers are shed off soon some however resist shedding and even withstand dry cleaning or washing they provide excellent evidence even after long periods unfortunately the fiber evidence has been considered to be a weak evidence as it was supposed to offer no individualizing features it is no longer true the fibers can be highly individualistic due to the various characteristics it has such as the chemical composition the manufacturing process dimensions various types of dyes the optical properties impurities from the manufacture wearer partial melting paint smearing or other stains and changes in the material due to aging process of the fiber the new technologies new and ever increasing number of materials more and newer modes of manufacture and ever increasing sophistication in examination techniques can give near individualistic identity to the fiber besides the cross transfer and variation in transferred fibers can fix the culprit and the victim contact we have no quantitative probability values for all types of fibers however it is believed that the cross transfer of two or more fibers of the uncommon nature should clinch the contact issue next we will study about the examination of fiber evidence the main evaluation techniques for the fibrous evidence follow the general pattern of evaluating the micro traces however there are specific determination to be made various techniques processes and determination that are made are the first is the preliminary examination the fibers are examined visually with the hand magnifier under the stereo microscope the studies includes the twist of the thread string rope or cord the number of strands present the number of threads in the string the number of fibers in each thread the defect in the thread or weave pattern the thread counts of cloth both in weft and warp case if recovered torn piece of clothing originally formed part of the standard provides a mechanical fit may indicate the common source next comes the microscopic examination a microscope is the most important tool of a forensic science laboratory it is needed to all branches of forensic science a microscope in its applied simplest form is a magnifying lens continuous improvement and inventions have given a variety of microscopes suitable for different purposes compound microscopes stereo microscopes comparison microscopes fluorescence microscope and the phase transfer microscope and none other than the metallurgical microscopes are common items that can be found in the forensic science laboratory the use of infrared rays for microscopy and the electron microscope are comparatively the recent additional innovations in this field they have an important impact on forensic science for example the scanning electron microscope or the SEM 
is becoming indispensable in forensic microtrace analysis. A collection of known sample can be made of which only a fiber or two is needed to be mounted alongside an unknown to give you a great deal more assurance in making your identification easy. Alternatively, you could assemble a set of permanent slides to give you a known to compare with the unknown. Ravel yarn of the cloth and untwist. If there is more than one ply, examine each separately and look at the warp seriously from weft. In a fabric with yarns of different colors, you should really look at each color separately. When the yarn is nearly untwisted, do not pull it apart. Hold it over a drop of water or a glycerine on a microscopic slide and clip of a length of about 10 millimeters, letting it drop onto the slide. Using two needles, tease the fiber to separate them. Ideally, you should not have the fibers crossing each other at various levels. It is a common mistake to have far too many fibers on a slide. So drop a cover slip on top and examine for any air bubbles if present. Press gently on the cover slip with the tip of the needle and not your finger. If bubbles are still present, hold a needle against the edge of the cover slip and raise the slip with the other needle from the opposite side. Using the first needle with a hinge, introduce a little liquid and lower the slip slowly. You may wish to use this technique in any case rather than dropping the cover slip on. Place the slide on the microscope state so that the fibers on the slide are in the center of the hole. Use a objective and eyepiece to give a magnification of 100 to 150x and if possible but even 60x will also do. Then observe the fiber for physical characteristics. The microscopic examination is useful to find out the structure of fiber, the nature of the fiber material, the diameter of the fiber, the presence or absence of contamination, color of fiber, cross-sectional structure, Inclusions including delustering agents, adhering materials, process failure defects, damages, abrasion or wear. Using ultraviolet rays and polarized light extends the microscopic examination and provides additional discriminating data. Next comes the physical properties. Density, refractive index, melting and softening point and tensile strength gives important information about the fibers. Now we'll study about the fiber color. The value of fiber identification is influenced by its color. Various types of dyes are used to give fiber its desired color. Coloring of individual fiber is done before being spun into the yarns. Dyeing of yarns can also be done and the fabrics made from them can also be dyed. Application of color on the surface of fabrics can also be done in case of the printed fabrics. Application of color and absorption along the length of the fiber are important comparison characteristics. The discoloration and color fading also leads to increased value of the fiber association. The dyes of crime and specimen samples can be compared using the comparison microscope and other instrumental techniques. Next comes the microtomy. Cross-sectional study of fibers reveals structural features that are otherwise difficult to comprehend. The technique is very similar to that of the one employed in the study of hair. The cross-sections of the fibers are obtained with the help of an instrument called microtome. Clean fiber is embedded in hard wax, plastic or flesh, hardened by the special treatment and then sliced off. The cross-section of the fibers obtained are placed on a microscopic slide treated with albumin. Microscopy reveals the cross-sectional structure of hair. Microtomy is helpful to determine the structure of fiber. It also permits proper study of the shape of the cross-sectional area. Lastly, I will summarize all that 
we have studied in this module. The smallest unit of a textile material which has length many times greater than that its diameter is called as a fiber. Fibers are classified into two that is natural or man-made. The main constituent of the vegetable fiber is the cellulose. The commonest and important plant fiber in India are cotton, flax, hemp, jute and coir. The animal fibers are naturally made from the fibrin protein. It is a machine made fiber obtained by the regenerated cellulose from cotton, wood and other suitable plant materials. Rayons are the modified cellulose fibers. Most of the fibers presently manufactured are solely from the synthetic chemicals and are therefore classified as synthetic fibers. Micro traces fixes the identity of the scene of crime. Fibers also help in the reconstruction of occurrence, the sequence of various events and also helps in the modus of parenting. Transfer and cross transfer of fibers frequently takes place among all the persons, places and paraphernalia which are involved in the criminal cases through wearing apparels, carpets, upholstery, bedding, textile mills, draperies, furries, etc. Fibers are valuable evidence because of large variety and frequent exchange. The main evaluation techniques for the fibrous evidence follow the general pattern of evaluating the micro traces. Various dyes are employed to give the fiber its desired color. The dyes of crime and specimen samples can be compared using the comparison microscope and other instrumental techniques. Cross-sectional study of the fibers reveal structural features that are otherwise difficult to comprehend. The technique is similar to the one employed in the study of hair.